Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Louise Hubar begins now. Those looking to sell a home in Hobart are being urged to get on the market in the next few weeks. A new report shows extra value can be found during spring and summer, with local agents already reporting a surge in inquiries. After a quiet winter, real estate agent Jack Lush has a spring in his step. He says the industry is dealing with a surge in those looking to list in Hobart. About two weeks ago, like, like overnight, it just sort of switched. And there was like nine listings and ten properties sold within the one within the one week. Warmer weather equals hot property, according to new figures from PropTrack. Its Market Insights report reveals national selling prices rise by 0.8% on average in November. In Hobart, it jumps by more than a percent. For an average priced home um, of about $750,000, that equates to about $10,000 more dollars for sellers in returns. That's not the best month, though. Prop track finding February is prime time in Hobart. Prices are about 1.46% above average. That late summer period as well as spring tend to be the two best times to sell. The weather starts getting better, people like people are getting over the, the winter blues. With interstate visitors flocking to Tasmania over the summer, agents say it's a perfect time to be visible. You want to be in before the Christmas period and that's when all the people from the mainland are going to start coming down. It's when we had about out-of-state buyers coming down to Tasmania as well. In further good news for sellers, experts say the recent pause in interest rate rises should help demand and value heading into next year. The people have caught up to how much they needed to save to start purchasing properties. But the past several months have seen um, growth across the Hobart market again. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. A plane has been grounded at Launceston Airport after smoke was spotted coming from an engine. The Virgin Australia flight bound for Melbourne was turned back to the gate before takeoff. The airport says passengers were safely disembarked while the matter was investigated. It's unclear what's caused the issue. Tasmanians are being urged to remain vigilant with heavy falls and thunderstorms expected to lash parts of the state later tonight and into the morning. The SES has issued advice to monitor conditions for Hobart and surrounding areas, as well as the east coast, warning heavy rains may cause flash flooding. Motorists are asked to drive to the conditions and to stay up to date with the latest warnings. Kai Wicks will join us later with the rest of the weather forecast. A variety Tasmania event described as a carnival on wheels has hit the road brightening up a damp day. Cars and people were dressed for the occasion, ready to exhaust the funds they've spent a year working to raise. Out of the fog emerges Variety's 32nd Taz Bash, a calendar favourite event with 11 cars taking part. I'm a newie at it. I've only done it for 31 years. Each team revved up to spend a year's worth of fundraising on sick and disadvantaged children. They go out, out of their way every single day throughout the year um, to raise funds in so many different ways. Um, anything from sausage sizzles to rattling the tin to contacting their corporate networks. The drivers dress to match their car's themes. Italian background, so um, yeah, we, brother and I had this idea of dressing up as Romans, um, buying an Italian little car and, uh, and driving around the state to raise money for, for children in need. Fueled up for a six-day road trip, the colourful convoy will venture off the beaten track. The trick for us is to get from A to B via Z. Um, so we're going to Launceston via um, the Great Lakes and tomorrow we're going from Launceston back to Launceston via the north, uh, the central coast. Making pit stops in regional towns and schools. They run around to all the cars and they get gifts and giveaways and there's smoke and bubbles and noise and sound and uh, they just think it's the best thing ever. Rest Point Casino, the final pin on the map. Bye, off to see the children. Brianna Boylan, 7 Tasmania News. Birthday celebrations are in full swing for Richardson Harley-Davidson, marking 45 years of biking history. Hundreds turned out to watch death-defying stunts with the next generation of rev heads going full throttle for the jam-packed community day. Without everyone supporting us and supporting the business and the charities, we wouldn't be able to give back and do what we do. 
The event recognising its ongoing commitment to local charity, raising $50,000 for the Launceston General Hospital's Children's and Neonatal Ward. Sort of uh, helping them out getting special tools for their um, uh, ward and making it easier to look after our little young ones. It's the 10th year of raising funds for the LGH. A Tasmanian family has put on a show all in the name of a cause close to their hearts. Party glowers rocked into this year's Z-Fest, a local musical festival in honour of Xander Chug, who died in 2020. The charity event raising crucial funds for Ronald McDonald House, with Xander's family giving back to the organisation which helped them when he was a young boy. It was almost a first thought after we lost Xander that we need to give back to these people that made him get 17. Xander was predicted to last two weeks, he lasted 17 years, so I'm just thankful for that and I'm thankful to be able to give back. All businesses and bands donated their time and talents for the festival's first public appearance away from the family farm. An 86-year-old artist has unveiled a unique display of glass windows 30 years in the making as part of Seniors Week celebrations. Michael Nunn's Dal de Verre technique uses thicker materials than stained glass, which produces deeper colour effects. The series at St John's Catholic Church in Glenorchy, inspired by a window in Buckfast Abbey in England, which was created by an early mentor. He took me to his workshop and, uh, and showed me the technique how to, so how to uh, assemble the windows. Now retired, the exhibition is likely to be one of Michael's last. Thousands of Tasmanians have turned out for one of the state's favourite show days. Longford playing host to a celebrity guest, drawing in fans eager to catch a glimpse of the star attraction. From Sesame Street to the Longford showgrounds. This year we've got Cookie Monster and Elmo, which is pretty cool. Crowds turning out en masse, not letting the weather rain on their parade. So thrilled that everyone's come through the gates. It's a great atmosphere, good vibe. Yeah, it's really happening. From show bags to sideshow alleys, Dagwood dogs and Dodgem cars, the show offering something for everyone. Uh, shopping. Love all of it. The animal nursery is a huge hit. Some taking the time to get up close and personal with the cutest attractions, while thrill seekers braved a more daring approach. It was very scary. It makes you feel sick, very sick. The big winners of the day, leaving with some extra precious cargo. A lucky ticket. The country of Bonanza once again taking the cake, celebrating 166 years of family fun. I think it's just a great community, family friendly. We have lots of free entertainment when you come onto the sites, which is great. And our animal nursery is just amazing and the kids just love it. No kidding around at the Longford Show. Victoria Easto, 7 Tasmania News. Meanwhile, the festive shopping season has begun with only 65 sleeps to go before the big day. The early Christmas market giving shoppers the chance to get ahead on their gift buying. Tasmanian businesses thrilled to spruik their products with something for everyone, from baubles to wreaths and bonbons. It's so nice to give people the opportunity to buy local gifts, so I try to keep, like, make cheap small things that they can use for gifting. You've got to get prepared for these things so it's nice to kind of get it out there now, give people a bit of a chance to kind of think about what they want and what's available coming up to Christmas soon. The market will travel to Launceston Silverdome next month. The Tassie Tigers women's side is still winless in the hockey one after going down to Perth 4-1 last night. The Thundersticks made a fast start, setting up the win in the first quarter of the game. Three goals inside the first 10 minutes, helping break the game open. Pell Ramshaw took a blistering penalty corner in their round one win. Oh, that is absolutely walloped. <laughs> Lucy Millington scored a consolation, but Perth were too strong. In the men's, a Jeremy Haywood double helped Tassie to a 2-1 win. It's the Tigers' second win of the season. The Hobart Hurricanes' WBBL season has got off to the worst possible start, thrashed by the Scorchers at Utah Stadium last night. 
Perth's Sophie Devine in fine form. Her 87 off just 44 balls, including 11 fours and two oh. sixes. Launches into that, does Sophie Devine. Don't worry about the rope. Don't worry about the fence. Look out to the people in the stand. That is a monster. The Scorchers batting line up on fire, eventually reaching four for 186. In reply, the Hurricanes had the wind taken out of them in the first over, losing two wickets. Well, why not? Go up, go up. Yeah, get your second wicket in your first over. What? Hobart never recovered from that. Despite a fighting 37 from Molly Strano, the Canes were bowled out for just 88 inside 16 overs. Good evening. We woke to an overcast morning with showers gradually increasing during the day. Hobart 15 degrees, Launceston 21. A few isolated showers and storms fired up about the north and west. Devonport 19, Burnie 17, with the highest rainfall recorded at Southport with 10 millimetres. The state's top today, 22 in Strawn, Flinders Island 21, Smithton and Lowhead 19. King Island and Bushy Park 18, St Helens and Grove 16. Friendly Beaches and Mariah Island both 15 degrees today. There is Currently a large cloud band over Tasmania. Thunderstorms are seen just off the west coast and a spiral of low to high level cloud sits west of King Island. Low level cloud is evident over inland parts of Queensland and the Territory with some thunderstorms hanging around. Mid high level cloud hovers over western WA. Tomorrow a high moves to the top of the bite directing a ridge of high pressure over central parts of Australia as a low pressure system sits over the state. Winds 10 to 20 knots at about the state reaching 30 knots at times in the north and south. Southwesterly swells expecting in the west and south up to four metres in the evening. Now there is a gale warning that continues for many coastal areas, also a strong wind warning between east of Flinders Island to southeast Cape. Stay safe on our roads as there is a road weather alert rather that has been issued for many parts of the state tomorrow. A flood warning continues for the north, northeast, the Huon, Derwent and southeast catchments. And a warning is in place for sheep graziers in the southeast. Tomorrow, Hobart, a possible storm expecting 19, similar conditions in Richmond 21, showers and 20 for ooze. Launceston showers 18, showers also for Devonport and Deloraine, both 16. Burnie and Strawn showers and 17, very windy in White Mark with 15. St Helens, a possible storm 17, much the same for Swansea, 18 degrees, showers and windy conditions in White Mark, 15 to the top. Monday, showers easing and contracting to the west during the day. Tuesday showers developing about the west in the morning and extending statewide. Wednesday showers continue about the west and develop about the far south extending statewide during the day with snow falling to 500 metres. Looking further north tomorrow, 34 and partly cloudy in Darwin, sunny skies in Sydney and Brisbane, sharing a top of 30 degrees. And currently it's hazy in Hobart, raining in Launceston and also in Devonport. That's all from me this evening, Louise. Thank you for that, Kyra, and that's all the news for now as well. Thanks for joining us tonight. Stay safe on the roads. Enjoy your evening. Good night.